In this video, we're going to be creating a fun little design, and we're going to be learning a little bit about some of the special uh, features here in our Easy Stone macro. But more importantly, we're going to be learning about a lot of the little tiny Corel Draw things that we're going to use every day in our design work that is going to make you a better designer uh, and be able to produce these designs more quickly. And so what we want to do here is just uh, explore a design idea that I have in my head and just kind of show you some of the different things that we can use here in CorelDRAW in conjunction with some of the special features here in EasyStone to be able to create this design uh, fairly easily. So first of all, let's go ahead and grab our ellipse tool in CorelDRAW, hold down our control key and draw out a perfect circle. By holding the control key, it will draw a perfect circle. Let's change the size of our circle to whatever we want. In my case, I'm going to choose six inches for this example. Now what I want to do is I want to create a line right down the middle of my circle. And so what we're going to do is just grab our two point line tool. Now this is a special uh, toolbar, custom toolbar that I created in CorelDRAW. You can download it off our website if you don't already have it. But we're just going to snap, notice where it says quadrant, that's going to snap a quadrant is the center point. And you see these little control handles, we're just going to hover over one and resize our line. Now notice how if you look, and these are these little tidbits, study them, think about them, because, like I said, it's things like this that we use every day, and it may seem kind of minor and doesn't matter. But if you remember these things, you'll use them in your day-to-day -day design work. So when I scale my, my line here, notice that at the bottom, the line doesn't move at the bottom. The line is only moving at the top. And what I actually want to do is I want the line to move at the top and the bottom equally. So to do that, here's a little corral draw tip. Just hit the shift key. Notice now that the line has extended at the top and the bottom the exact same amount. Okay, so that's the first little tip to keep in mind. All right, so here we have our line, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click it on line, and when we do that, we have these little control handles. If I grab one, I can rotate this. If I hold down my control key, what will happen is it will actually snap at different points along that curve. So you'll feel it just snap right into place. So now you can see I have a vertical line and a horizontal one. But really, what we're doing is removing, we're removing the vertical line. So let's just go ahead and let go of our mouse button. And you can see now that my vertical line is gone, and now I have a horizontal line. What I actually want is I want both. So let's rotate again, holding our Control key to snap, but then right click. And that makes a duplicate. So you're going to left click and drag and then right click to make a duplicate. Now that is something you're going to use over and over and over again. So get that practice down. Move an object with your left mouse button, right click, make a duplicate of it. So we're going to keep going. So same thing, control key, right click, control key, right click. So we have something that looks like this. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, use on the stone fill tab, we're going to be using the island fill button. So we're going to go one, two island fills and hit island fill. And you see what I did? It just created two offset circles. Now, the amount of offset is already calculated for us. So because we chose a stone size of 3.4, because we chose a, a spacing between stones of 0.5, it adds those two values together and defines the offset for us. Of course, we could override that, but for our purpose, we want we want those offsets to be an exact amount. Okay, so now what we want to do is I want each one of these segments, each one of these lines to be separate objects. And right now we have three circles. So we built a function in uh, to Easy Stone where we can select the entire graphic, come over to the editing tab, and choose intersections. And what the software does is it finds the intersections of every single line intersection. Now I'm going to delete the stuff that we don't need. So let's delete that, that, and all I'm doing is just kind of coming around and just selecting all those extensions because we don't need those. Okay, now all the stuff here in the middle we don't need. Here's another tidbit for you. If I select right here, click and drag, nothing happens, right? 
in CorelDRAW, we have to fully encompass the line segment that we want to delete, and then we can delete it. But if we use the Alt key, anything that we come across, even though it's not fully encompassed, we can select. So now we've selected all those lines. If I hit my Delete key, they all go away. Okay? So keep that in mind. When we want to select something, but we don't want to have to fully encompass it, use the Alt key and drag the marquee over the top of it, and then it will make that selection for us. Now, we really can't see what's happening here, but if I select one of these line segments, do you see that Start and End node right there? So now that tells us that's just one little segment. So let's begin our work. We're going to start with Emerald Green. Go to the Stone tab and choose Add Stones. Then we're going to switch to Light Cyan. Now this is just what I'm doing, just for the fun of, of the design. Okay, You can do whatever you want. I just want to give you an idea and show you some of the design principles. It's not really In this particular video, it's not really about the design that we're creating. It's more about uh, the different tools that we're using and the way we're going about it. So what I just did here is I'm just going to kind of alternate colors here. So because we have red there, I'm going to choose uh, citrine. And then we can choose red for the outside. because I, I just want to kind of alternate colors just for the fun of it. So we'll go back to green here. Okay, select the next line in. And let's see, we're going to do light cyan. And the next line in, we'll do citrine. And we have one more to go here. So this one, we're going to do emerald green. This we're going to do citrine. And finally, this one, we're going to do light cyan. And if I wanted to, I could keep going here. So like uh, the, the matchup here would be... Let's just go ahead and do it. I was going to just mirror it, but let's just go ahead and do it a little bit differently this time around. So we'll go Citrine, we'll go Light Siam, and then we'll go to Emerald Green. And then here we'll do Emerald Green and Citrine. Light Siam and then here we'll do Emerald Green Light Siam whoops there we go and we'll do Citrine and what are we going to do up here let's see let's do Emerald Green do citrine and then we'll go back to light Siam. all right perfect yeah it gives us a nice uh, staggered look all the way around so I think I'm real happy with that so let's go ahead and select all those we're gonna we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of these pads you see all those pads and notice that the stone spacing um, between stones horizontally and vertically you can see is perfect um, so we'll go ahead and choose the uh, delete stone paths and now you can see all those pink lines and black lines that were paths so now all these stones are all individual okay so that's cool and then what we're gonna do if there's any overlapping stones let's go ahead and check that out go to the editing tab check spacing it found 24 overlapping stones so we'll go ahead and dispose of those now we don't have any overlapping stones and so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the next process. So the next process here is what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these existing stones, go to the stone field tab and just hit the up arrow and I'm going to hold down my alt and my control key. Now what that will do is, is see when we use these arrows we can make duplicates. Okay, So that's the first point. So that's what the stone field tab does. But if we hold down the alt control keys what it will do is it will nudge if we hold down the Alt key, and if we hold the Control key down, it nudges half the offset distance. That offset distance, notice, is the same as the island fill distance. 
this offset distance by default is the stone size and the spacing. So let's try it. Alt, Control, and you can see what it did there, right? It actually shifted that over. I just kind of wanted to point that out uh, for you. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to offset this stone, and we could tell it. We could actually let's do that. Let's give it a, an actual specific amount. So let's offset this 17 steps. So the the first stone is one, but if we offset 17, and I select all of those. Look at the bottom of Corel Draw here. See where it says 18 objects selected? So we have 18 objects selected. So that's why we had the original one plus 17 more. So now we're going to take that whole row and we're going to offset it to the left. See how it does that? Okay. Now just to make sure that this these these two columns is dead center of our design, let's go ahead and select that. Okay. And pull over a guideline and see if that is actually the center point and see it's not these these are actually shifted just a little bit uh, one stone width so that's why we'll go ahead and select that whole column alt control now those are perfectly centered just like they should be okay all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a just a section of them here um, and we're going to change the color. So let's say we want this to be, oh, I don't know. Let's just say we want it to be citrine. And then let's take another grouping and let's make it light cyan. You can do whatever you want to. This is really just for fun. Oops. Wrong button. <laughs> I chose to add stones to all those stones. No. What we want to do is we want to rename and fill. There we go. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make like a, I don't like a peace sign, if you will. Um, and you're going to see this is going to be a fun little design uh, once we get into it a little bit farther. So what we need to do here, and this is just what I did. I actually deleted a couple of stones here. I'm going to delete three. Take these, Alt-Control, go to the Stone tab and nudge those over a half, half of that 3.9. Take that top stone, and I'm going to just grab one of these stones here it doesn't really matter which one but I kind of when I did it I just kind of picked one of the middle ones and then we'll go back to the stone tab hold our shift key and add stones and you can see we get this kind of weird thing happening here we're gonna fix that though so the way we do that is select one of the end stones doesn't matter which one and then mirror it see so now they're all straightened out and now what we did is because we had a green and a yellow it kind of creates this gradation for us but again we're going to change the color of those stones here later on so don't worry about that so again select those two stones shift add stones again select that end stone mirror it and that will straighten that back out now what i would do is i would just go ahead and take care of this uh these stones on the left and then once we get all those situated, we'll just mirror whatever we do to the right. So let's go ahead and select both of those and delete the stone paths. And then what I would do is just come in here, like I said, and just change the color uh, of these stones. And I want to show you a, a really fun tool, and that is our freehand pick tool here in CorelDRAW. Marvelous tool where we can just freehand pick. See how I just, just you have to kind of get used to it. At first, I was like, geez, that's kind of, it was, it was just weird to get used to, but now I love it um, and use it all the time. So uh, just, you know, practice with it, and, and you'll, you'll begin to love it too. So again, freehand pick, just pick, and we're just going to come across there. See how we just made that real wild selection there? And re we'll hit rename and fill. And then uh, here again, what we'll do is we'll just come up here freehand pick and we'll change those stones to green okay just something fun like that and now once we have all of that now we can just flip it so let's just go ahead and freehand pick and now you notice over here right there I just kind of went right through that stone right it won't pick it because it's not fully engulfed only those stones that are fully engulfed but if I wanted to pick that up I could just hold down my alt key before I start and now when I run through it now 
it would be picked. See how this, this the last stone here on the left is not fully engulfed? But see those little points there? That shows those stones are all picked because the cursor, or the marquee rather, was over the top of it. So anything that it slices through, even though it's not fully engulfed, it's going to pick those stones up because I had my Alt key down. Okay, so now we're not going to do the Alt key. So we can slice through, just kind of come down here, make a real wild, crazy selection, and just boom. Grab from the center and nudge that back over again. So now you can see kind of what we have going on here. Now there is some overlapping stones because of our mirror. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So we'll go back to our editing tab, check spacing. All right. Now here's where the creative in us has to come out. And this is really, um, I mean, this was fun to show you how to do that. But this is where I think uh, you really have to have a good understanding of Corel Draw and not, and not be scared of it. Um, you know, it's going to take practice. But this is where the creative fun will come into play. So what we're going to do here, grab our text tool, and let's just type out the word love. So we're going to do a capital L. O V E. I must have my cap locks turned on, so let's try that again. There we go. Now, what font do we want to use? Well, for this, I want to use Times New Roman. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to scale this up quite considerably. And I'm just going to pretend that I don't see the O V E. I'm just going to focus on the L for right now. And what we're going to do is just kind of rotate this. And resize it a bit. Just kind of get my L. Just really focus on my L. And get that like I want it. So I think that's going to be pretty good. Let me maybe make it a little bit smaller. Alright, so now my L's in place. I'm going to be happy with that. So I'm just going to pull this back out. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to curves first. So hit Control Q. Or we could just right click on it too and hit convert to curves. Now what we need is we need each letter by itself. So we're going to right click and we're going to choose to break curve apart. Now when it does that, the letters that have two parts to them, like an inside and an outside, like the O and the, and, the, and the E, those parts are still there. Let's switch over to wireframe mode. You see those parts are still there. They're just two separate parts sitting on top of one another. If I change the color and I hit shift page down, another little tip. Um, to move objects up or down, shift page up would bring them all the way to the top, shift page down all the way down to the bottom. Now we can see those two parts, right? But what we're going to do is we're just going to take those and we're going to uh, uh, combine them together. So once you have two parts selected, that, that little icon becomes available, or we could hit Control L, or we could right click and choose Combine. Lots of ways to get the job done here in CorelDRAW. So there is love. So now what we're going to do is move that L into position where we think we want it. Something, I don't know, something like that. And then let's just take our O and move it. Now our O I want more or less uh, up at uh, top, to, you know, vertical. But I want to deliberately have it crooked because I want to show you something um, here in a bit. So let's make it a little bit crooked. We'll, we'll straighten it out later, but and I want to show you how we're going to straighten that out uh, precisely. Um, and then uh, we'll have our V here. Our V is going to go the other direction, right? And then finally our E, something like this. Okay, and you can kind of finesse those however you want them. But it's not going to be a, just a fun uh, little design to do. All right, so now that we have our love kind of, you know, roughed in about where we want it, let's go ahead and stone this out. Now, again, this is where I think, uh, you know, Easy Stone really excels because it allows us to do things fairly quickly and easily. And I, and I do it in a very different way than probably you would see it demonstrated elsewhere. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab an existing stone. Uh, remember, I just left click and drag, right click to make a duplicate. And let's just drop it any old place. All right. And then what we're going to do is take that same stone and drop it over here. So this is kind of 
just along that straight line. We're going to select both of those stones. So select one, hit the shift key, select the other. Come to the stone tab, shift, add stones. Okay. And then we're going to delete stone paths. And then for this little, little tail here, I just right click and drag, duplicate, right click and drag, duplicate. Done. Now, what to do with this? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually select these stones. Remember, right click and drag, move them up here. Wherever we think we want them. And then take those two. So I can already tell that's not really where we want them. I want to kind of keep in mind that I want to, I want to basically a straight line there. So select those two stones. Remember, select one, hold the shift key, select the other. Shift add stones. That creates, and notice how pretty pretty straight that is. That's that's pretty good. So then we'll pick that up, move it over here, and there we go. Right? So we'll go ahead and take those two and delete the stone paths. So now our L is complete. Right? So now let's move on to our O here. Same thing. I'm just going to grab a stone here, drop one there. And then I'm just going to just arbitrarily drop one there. Now, for our O, we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to grab our three-point curve tool, and I'm just going to rough in, roughly the same curvature. Doesn't have to be exact, just close enough. And whatever stone color we want to use really is irrelevant. Let's go ahead and keep everything the same, though, being that we're starting out with light cyan. We're going to change the color here in a bit, but let's just go ahead and add stones. Let's go ahead and delete stone paths and switch back to our pick tool. And then we're just going to manually drop in a few stones. Just to, because that O starts out skinny and then gets thick. So we're just going to kind of mimic that. And when you do this enough, you'll get that feeling for the spacing, and it'll actually come, you know, pretty quickly and easily to you. Now, here's the little corral draw tip that I was excited to show you about. What we need to do now that we have half our O, we need to mirror it. And let me show you how we're going to do that. We're going to grab our freehand pick tool, select just the stones that we want to mirror, and then we're going to grab our regular pick tool, pull those over, and flip them. That's step one. But now you see we have this. So what we're going to do is position. We know that this stone is the same as this one. So let's snap it from center to center. Now what? Now what we're going to do is click on one of the stones. That gets us a rotation. See this little thing here? That's the center of rotation. So we're going to put that there and then we can pull this up. See there? So now I can snap it from this center to this center, and now it's basically perfectly mirrored. Um, watch that over and over again, because it's going to take a few times for you to understand that principle. But once you do it, um, you'll use it all the time. So now you can kind of see what we have there for love. All right, so now what we're going to do, something kind of similar for our V here. So let's use that process again. I selected those six stones, drag this over here, position it where I want it, click on it again to get the rotation, change the center of rotation to the center, and then when I pull it down, see how it just pulls it straight down just like so, right? Perfect. Now I'm going to take these two stones and drag them down to the bottom, something like such. Take those two, shift add stones, shift add stones, All right? Select them both again, delete the stone paths, and now we got to go the other direction here. So again, we're going to take these four stones, pull them over wherever we think we want them. You know, for this purpose, we don't have to be super precise, but we do need to pull down a stone here. And let's do shift add stones that direction. And we want that angle to be pretty, pretty what the, even though it's not directly in line with the original V, it's at the same angle. All right. Now these stones here, see how these stones aren't exactly a 
aligned, what we can do is select those three and then on the editing tab hit this little respace feature and it will clean that little uh, intersection up for us automatically. And if I want a point of my V, which I think I do, I just manually copy one extra stone. Now, for the E here, I don't want to uh, reinvent the wheel. So let's go ahead and grab our free and pick tool. Grab an O. Click and rotate, right? And I'll use my, my arrow keys just to get it closer. And let's rotate this a bit more. And you might have to play with the rotation a little bit to get it exactly how we want it. And then I'm just going to position it and say, well, that's good enough for me. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to delete this, 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 and this and then this, and then take these two stones, shift add stones, remember, we'll mirror one of these. There we go, that's what we're looking for right there. Let's add one extra stone there. See that big wide gap there? Let's see if we can add one extra stone. Yep, perfect. Delete stone paths. And I might just nudge this one a little bit because again, because see how it's uh, it's a little bit thicker right there. We can delete that one probably, and you know if we wanted to add another one there, we could. Whatever you want to do, I don't think I want the second one there. I'll just leave the one. I think that'll look fine. So let's delete our E and our V and see what we got here. You know, I kind of like it. All right. So now when I remember I uh, said at the beginning, I want my O to be basically straight up and down. So what we're going to do here is grab over a guideline and center it right on. I know that this circle right here is the center of my O. I know that. So what we're going to do is grab our freehand pick tool, right? Click on it. Grab the center of this one. And oops, see, I got to change my center of my rotation to the center of my bottom stone. Then I can grab the center top stone and snap it right to my guideline. If, if, and only if, under the view menu, we have the snap to guidelines turned on. So I have snap to guidelines turned on. So keep that in mind. And then what we can do here is, now that my O is straight up and down, then we can move it into its final position. Okay. And there we have a fun little design. Now, I do want to go back in and with my freehand pick tool and I do want to change uh, to emerald green and so and I do want to show you something else too so we're gonna go in and change this but watch this freehand pick tool so we're gonna come in here right we have some stones already selected hold my shift key down and come in here that's going to add to the selection. One more time, shift key down. Then hit rename and fill, and you'll see that they all hit rename and fill. Pretty snazzy, right? So that takes care of that. And then uh, we're going to do something kind of similar for the bottom part here, where we're going to change. There's the first grouping of stones, and then we're going to hold our shift key down, grab our next grouping. Hold our shift key down, grab our next grouping. Now these two I didn't actually fully engulf, so shift key and then shift key again. Switch over to citrine and hit rename and fill. Oh, I missed one. Rename and fill. All right, so now that kind of gets things going there. Now I have a keyboard shortcut. I just want to show you this. To add a weed box, I just hit Alt W, adds a perfect weed box. Always good to check spacing again. I actually have a uh, keyboard shortcut for that, which is Alt C. 14 overlapping objects, so we'll go ahead and delete those overlaps. All right, and then I'm just going to show you how I finish this design off. So, what I would do is duplicate the design. I always duplicate it. Then, on this one, we're going to simulate the design. I have a keyboard shortcut for that too, 
Alt S. <laughs> I have keyboard shortcuts for lots of things. You'll actually find Simulate the button here on this on the Stone tab. It says Simulate, and that will give us a nice simulated rhinestone effect. All right. Now uh, I would like to add some bling objects, and you guessed it. I have a keyboard shortcut for that too. So I just hit Alt B, and I can just click and add little sparkles wherever I want them. And then when I hit the escape key, it'll set those little sparkles just like I want them. And that's pretty much it. Under the miscellaneous tab, I could export a proof image. I could, uh, I will show you how to export the vector file because that is really sweet uh, feature here in Easy Stone. So we're going to select our design and choose the export vector option. So for the first template, we're going to export all citrine. For the second template, we're going to do green. For the third template, we're going to do light cyan. And let's go ahead. For this example, let's just export to the CorelDRAW document itself. We could actually export to one or all these formats, but we're just going to export the color separations to the CorelDRAW file itself. So we'll go ahead and choose. Uh, we won't export a file. Just go right to the CorelDRAW document. And what it does, it gives us the completed version and all the color separations to create our templates. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope you learned a little bit about what Easy Stone can do. But also, more importantly, some little uh, tips and tricks here inside CorelDRAW to make uh, your design process here in CorelDRAW a little bit easier and a lot faster. Thanks for watching.